What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Counting Wisdom Podcast. Um, I wanted to talk about how to know if God exists. Now, the Bible gives indication that we, and if we were to sort of really examine our heart or, you know, examine the evidence, we can discover that we know that God exists. But the Bible says, you know, because of the circumstances of the world we don't always know we're sometimes blinded and so we can believe a lie or we can you know sort of uh, want to believe something that's not true you know, um, when it, when it really isn't. And so, or something, we want to believe something is true when it really isn't. And so I wanted to just offer a little bit of help on how to know there is a God. Now, one of the things I think we know there is a God is because of the existence of evil. Um, not that God is evil or God, the knowledge of God, you know, helps us to know whether there is, um, you know, good and evil. But it's just the very fact that, you know, because of the craziness of some of the things that go on and not just talking about crimes, but, you know, natural disasters, um, you know, when and a lightning strike um strike someone you know more than one time i've heard of a lightning strike striking someone like six times or something or seven times in like a year or something like that those are just too random now we can sometimes wonder i think why you know and i don't think this this podcast is getting into the why of things i mean this particular episode is getting into the why certain things happen or why certain things exist you know one of the things about the bible is not always answering the question of why but it's more along the lines of you know i think coming to the question of okay this is how things are so what are you going to do with the reality of how things are and so one of the things for the existence of evil is that you know when um i don't know an asteroid uh you know falls and kills someone or an earthquake you know destroys a whole city or town and then you know you have something crazy on that same scale happening um you know, uh, later on in, uh, in a few weeks down the road or something, you know, those things I think point to the existence of God, just because some of these things you can put off as a coincidence, you know, but some things I made a little episode on, you know, something being too good to be true. And I won't really touch on that too much. But one of the things that I was saying in that episode was some things are just too good to be true. Too good for there not to be a God, I think is specifically what I was mentioning. Um, For example, you know, can you imagine being, you know, the reality of where we are, where, you know, we discover that we're in a big universe we discover that we're, you know, the only close planet with life and human beings. And in those, in that episode, I was sort of just, just kind of pointing to the fact of how, you know, there are too many things happening for it to just be a sort of scientific coincidence. And I frankly think that, you know, you have to come up with a better idea than, you know, something being a coincidence and just chucking it up to chance, you know, for 
some of the stuff that happens here on this earth is too crazy. Um, for the existence, the second thing I think is the existence of sadness. You know, I think there are some situations that are terribly sad that are actually too much for the human heart to bear sometimes. And God has to step in and help us through it. But still, you know, there are situations that are terribly sad that I I can't imagine being in the middle of the universe and some sad situation happening and really only me or the person involved or the group of people involved know about but no one else knows about it and also no one else can offer any help to uh to you know help me with that sad situation i think that's just too much for there not to be a god now again we can go into the why of like hey why did this sad situation happen but i think it doesn't take away from the fact of there being a god or just the story of the bible of how there's also a evil god of this world called the devil or satan who is behind a lot of this stuff or a lot of the different you know rebellions and so um that's what I would say for number two on how I know there is a God because of those things. Now, um, I think another reason of how we know there is a God, I've, I've talked about this before, but technology. You know, I don't see how human beings can really think, you know, and I want to get into also just some situations that are so troubling that we can't you know there possibly has to be a god in order to get us out of it but before i get to that technology you know there's some situ some technology that it doesn't make sense you know for there to be trees you know dirt rocks mountains oceans and there to be such technology that comes from that it's impossible now, nothing's in tune possible for God. And then if we want to talk about the why of how how does God do what he does, you know, that's a different subject. But to talk about, you know, um, just how do you get a phone or a car engine? I think we can understand the whole concept of a car, but specifically the car engine you know, the, the engine itself is crazy. I don't think many of us probably don't even understand how it works. But I know, I know we sometimes think that we do, but we really don't. Um, and that's that's to go to, uh, you know, we can say that about many things in life where, you know, when someone, someone gives us a definition of something and we're like, oh, you know, hey, I understand that, you know, but we really don't understand it. For example, I was just looking up um, I was just looking up quantum computing and none of them could explain it in a way that was understandable. And I watched about three or four videos on it, which is not really that many. I, I know probably a documentary would probably be a better, but I, I feel like I have a better understanding of what quantum computing is. But yet, you know, it was so complicated that it was like it, this, what they're trying to do or what they are doing is impossible. You know, especially I know it's not good to compare ourselves, you know, like my intelligence versus another human being's intelligence, you know, where we think of, you know, hey, I thought of, you know, I don't know, um, putting a, a wheel on a, I don't know, a stick and creating an axle, you know, wow, we think we're that smart. But when you talk about, you know, some of the things that people are coming up with as far as humanoid, as far as humanoid robots, as far as quantum computing, as far as the iPhone, the list goes on. I'm just thinking of the basic things that I can sort of 
uh, you know, come to my head that I sort of think about as far as, you know, I'm in a car right now, so it's easy for me to think of a car. Uh, but these are just some ideas of technology that, you know, when you, when you realize, you know, I think people really, uh, put themselves out there to God when they're, when they're creating some of this stuff, I don't think they realize it. But it's like they're they're showing God that, hey, they understand that there is a God and they are just ignoring him. Because when you think of some of the stuff that people are doing, you know, again, let's stick with quantum computing. You know, the level of knowledge and intelligence, at least human intelligence, to create something like that. That tells me that they understand, you know, the whole concept of the Bible, but they are just not listening to it. They understand that there is a God because what they are doing is actually impossible, you know, as far as the natural sense of, you know, it doesn't make sense for human beings to go from, I don't know, even within a hundred years or so, or a thousand years to go from you know, riding horses and, you know, different things like that to all of a sudden we're driving cars and, uh, you know, using the bathroom and plumbing, plumbed bathrooms and, you know, flying in the sky. It would take, I don't know, a lot of years, a lot of years to even come up with some of one of these things. You know, you can't go from cars to all of a sudden you're, you're, you are going to planes and then all of a sudden you're, you know, we're landing people on the moon and we're like, oh yeah, you know, we just came up with this. You know, we, we just, it sort of clicked and we figured it out. That's impossible. Now I understand that there is a God, you know, I understand that Jesus specifically made the world and the universe, but for them to sort of deny God, but yet do some of this impossible stuff and to also you know, present it to the public like it's normal, you know, it's like, okay, you know, you guys are really falling into Romans chapter one and two. It's hard for me to build a case for you guys when I'm like, hey, God, you know, they they don't really know what they're doing. But yet, you know, they're doing things that are just, you know, beyond normal human intelligence. Now, again, I'm not the best comparison, you know, um, I, I can't say that, you know, I'm the sharpest tool in the shed, you know, but when I think of trying to do some of the stuff that these people are doing, I know it's impossible for them to think that they're doing it on their own intelligence, You know, I know it's impossible for me to think that, you know, they are doing some of the stuff that they're doing based off of, oh, they're just, you know, super smart human beings. No. And then for people to ultimately, you know, according to the Bible, if they reject Jesus Christ and die in that rejection, you know, to go to hell for all of eternity, their intelligence doesn't match their outcome. And that doesn't make sense. You know, to think about the person that invented the iPhone or the group of people that invented the iPhone or the television, that they could possibly be in hell right now or going to hell. It doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense. Other than plugging in the factor that they know, they know that there is a God. They are just choosing to ignore God. So that's, that's the only thing that makes sense that, you know, we didn't know about until Paul wrote about it in the Bible, but I, and I never really knew about it until I had that revelation from, you know, the book of Romans from God. And it was like, wow, you know, cause I had already thought in my mind before, you know, I was thinking like, you know, I know this person says that they don't know there's a God, but I was thinking in my mind, I was like, they know. You know, the way that they talk, the way that they act, they know there is a God, but yet it doesn't add up with what's coming out of their mouth. 
And so anyway, let's move on to the other thing, which is just troubling situations. I know there's been, I know personally, some troubling situations that I've been in that I know it was impossible for me to get out of it. For example, I know I have and still have a desire to drink alcohol. But I know I've said some things about alcohol and about smoking cigarettes along the lines of, I love this and I never want to stop. But yet, I find myself stopping and actually not wanting to do those things. And yet, I still do have a struggle with it. But I know that I'm much different than what I was You know, I know that where I'm at now is impossible because I would I would be drinking every single day. You know, I I drink maybe now I'm I'm call myself quitting, but I don't know, give it maybe a month or two months or so. And I'll have maybe like five drinks or so and then I'll I'll space it out. But you see me when I was. Before I was a Christian, and I know the state of mind that people are in today, I would be drinking all the time. And so I know that the state that I'm in right now is impossible. And that's just one example. I have more examples from my own personal life. But even when you um, think about, I don't know, a homeless person... Uh, you know, who comes on the radio and they, they're, you know, I know in my area, there's a little, uh, radio station for, you know, a homeless shelter and they come on the radio and they're like, Hey, you know, I made it to the mission and, you know, I, I changed my life around and, you know, I started making better decisions I know those things are impossible in this world just because of how addicting some of these things are. For example, pornography. No one in their right mind would stop looking at pornography. Or I I should say in their wrong mind. But when you think about some of the addictiveness of some of these things, and also just the sheer fact of how some things are not necessarily harmful to yourself or um, maybe other people in that way. I know some of these things are impossible to break. And yet, I have found myself free from some of those things. And I know it's impossible. And so, I know there is a God. You know, I just know it. Now, I hope some of these some of these examples were helpful. But even just, I don't know, uh, some of the, the things that you see people do or, you know, you just see people, you know, in certain situations, not necessarily bad, but even good situations, you know, I know that some of these things, you know, are a direct influence from God or also when I say God, I also mean some of these things are direct influence of the devil or, you know, a being that has more power than a human being. Because obviously the devil is able to do things that are, you know, beyond human capability too. But people sometimes even deny the devil and his existence, which is ironic. But anyway, um, these are just some helpful, helpful thoughts that hopefully um, anyone out there who is thinking about becoming a Christian, you know, who wants to become a Christian, you know, it's as simple as just putting your faith in Jesus Christ. You know, he can give you eternal life. He can change your thoughts toward things that are impossible for you to break. You know, he can give you an uh, understanding of how there is a God. You know, if you are com- 
in complete unbelief and you're like, you know, I've heard a lot, but, you know, I still don't know. I highly recommend, you know, even calling out to Jesus Christ, who you don't know if exist, but I highly recommend calling out to him and saying, you know, hey, something along the lines of, hey, Jesus, if you do exist, you know, please give me more understanding about you or help me to believe that there is a God. I highly recommend starting even from there. Just because um, God has a desire to save all people. And so I believe you can start from any situation. It doesn't matter the sins that you've committed. You know, I know there are sins that as people, you know, if you were to tell someone about it, they would judge you, you know. But as far as God wanting to get you to heaven, you know, it, it really doesn't matter what you've done. And I, of course, I'm saying that from the standpoint of not knowing what you have done, you know, for sure. But regardless, Jesus has already made the statement saying all manner of sin and blasphemy can be forgiven. That's not my words. Those are Jesus's words. And so when a Christian tells you that it doesn't matter what you have done. Those aren't our words. You know, those aren't, you know, us making it up. That's basically the interpretation of Jesus's words saying. Anything that you have done, all manner of sin and blasphemy can be forgiven. But Jesus still requires you to come to him in faith. Come to him and say, Jesus, you know, please forgive me. Please help me to be a child of God. But, you know, I think that it is hard to do sometimes. You know, it's not always easy to call out to God or, you know, um, to change your ways. But you can go to heaven and God can work on you if you were to just call on him and ask him to help you. There's not really any barrier that you can think of, even though you would probably your heart or, you know, something might make you think, oh, you know, this one thing is keeping me from Jesus Christ. This one thing is keeping me from God. But that's actually not true. There's nothing that you can think of that God can't overcome for you to not have faith in Jesus Christ and to be saved. You may be, oh, you know, I was an atheist. You know, I'm a, I'm a complete atheist and I just don't believe that there is a God. God can help you with that. Jesus can help you with that. You know, it may be, oh, you know, I'm LGBTQ. You know, I'm, I was deep in that sin you know, I've done orgies, I've done, you know, porn. No way God can help me. No, he can help you with that. He can still save you. You know, I don't have to go through the whole list of these things, but, you know, whether it be, um, you know, oh, you know, um, I, I'm a Muslim, and so I, I believe in, you know, this Muslim faith over here. And so, you know, I don't, I'm not sure if anything can convince me that Christianity is, is right. Jesus can help you with that. But I think one of the things that God wants you to do through based off of Romans chapter 10 verses nine and 10 and Romans, the book, the whole book of Romans, Romans chapter eight is that he wants you to call on him, call on the name of the Lord you know, saying something like Jesus, you know, I'm in this condition. I'm, I'm a Muslim, but I, I do want to go to heaven. I care about eternal life. Jesus, please help me to change. Jesus, please show me the right way. Maybe I'm confused. You know, maybe I'm Jewish. Maybe I'm an atheist. Maybe I'm Muslim. Maybe I'm a Buddhist, but maybe you're kind of honestly one of those things. Maybe you're sort of like, oh, you know, I think maybe I'm going to go with the idea that um, 
the whole world was born out of um an animal's mouth or something 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 you know kind of crazy or something well jesus can help you from any condition that you're in and so anyway thanks so much for checking this out you know hopefully this was helpful to someone i think that um there are different things that you know we kind of struggle with but god can help you overcome it and so thanks so much and i will talk to you on the next one see ya